So it's been hard to be calm as an industry. We've watched so many things happen from the leaders of our industry in the US and in Europe. And before I get on and focus on the three things that we need to do as an industry going forward, I want to tell a quick story about a global industry that you're all very, very familiar with. This industry was growing very rapidly. This industry was connecting people around the world, in Europe and the US and everywhere. And this industry was based on trust and transparency. And the press lauded this industry for the good that it's doing. And it's on this enormous secular change, helping so many people around the world. In this industry, there was a problem. The leader stumbled. There was literally smoke. And the press turned on the company. And the company's value got cut in half. And the supply chain was damaged. And people didn't want to do this thing anymore. Does this sound familiar to anybody in this room? But that's actually not about us. It's about another company. And this is what the headlines were about this other company, this other industry. Kind of looks like stuff people said about us. Anybody have a guess who that company or what this industry is that stumbled, that had turbulence? VW, VW good guess. Anybody else? It's Boeing. In 2013, the batteries caught on fire. And the regulators jumped all over it. And the critics jumped all over it. Quality, trust, transparency. Nobody wanted to buy the planes, get on the planes. And so Boeing had to get together with the whole industry, the regulators, the press, and create an ecosystem to stabilize the situation. If you go back and look at a chart of Boeing stock, there's this teeny little blip that at the time seemed like a catastrophe. But now looking back, it's just this period of growth that they had to get through to reestablish trust and transparency. And this too is our opportunity as an industry is to get beyond this period of turbulence, our year 2016 of turbulence. These are their headlines, these are ours. It's amazing when you go back and look at what the press said about transportation and what we're doing, online marketplaces for credit, how similar the criticisms were. And so we as an industry are learning from Boeing and the transportation industry and others about how to move forward. And we'll talk about our market structure and the transparency and the recommunication of the benefits of what we do. So very quickly, let's look back for one second and then we'll go forward. In Q1, what happened? We saw for the first time some funding pressure that we as platforms around the world, for the first time in many years, had more borrowers than investors. We increased rates, some defaults increased, we increased rates again. And then spreads and securitization widened, and the press started picking at some of the things in our industry, and we had to keep communicating with the press. In Q2 was that major period of turbulence. We raised rates again, and we saw this major liquidity and major volatility, not just in marketplace lending, but if you'll remember, in the bond and stock markets around the world. And many, many platforms scaled back, did reductions in force, reductions in originations, and some even discounted loans and servicing fees to get through this very difficult second quarter. But as you can see, Lending Club and Urendai and OnDeck, the stock valuations are coming back, loan volumes are increasing, at Prosper, September is bigger than August, and August was bigger than July. We're all coming back with quality and transparency, and you've seen some very, very quality securitizations because of this search for yield is there. And this is one of the doors and windows that the market structure is going to open, and the ecosystem, and the companies like AltFi, and like PeerIQ, and DVO1, and Orchard, and others are helping us make the data standard and visualize the risk and what Duff and Phelps is doing in helping us do valuation is really helping with liquidity and securitizations. So what's really happening today? Let's take a minute and examine the market structure. Let's talk about the new necessary nine. Two years ago here at AltFi, I introduced the concept of the necessary nine 
the nine things each platform had to do to be successful. And today I'm going to introduce for the first time the nine things that a fund investing in marketplace lending around the world must do to be successful to add alpha. When you look at fund performance this year, you'll see some funds are up 10 basis points or down 200 basis points instead of the normal 65, 70 basis points we've come accustomed to. And we'll talk about the nine reasons why some of the funds are not performing, but why some are. And the silver bullet, the thing that we're all looking for, we'll go into that. And is there a silver bullet? So this is the first picture I want to lay out today. This has been drawn many times in offices, in marketplace lending uh, conferences. This is our market structure. And it's really divided in half by the vertical black line. The left side is the primary market. It's where people come to us, to our platforms. Retail people, institutions who come actively, institutions who come passively, and banks, and buy from us. And they hold it. They may or may not leverage it, but this is the beginning, the primary market. The secondary market is just emerging, where people and institutions who can buy from the marketplaces can then buy and sell back to each other, and then we just change servicing in the back. And this has to change. We must develop this liquid secondary market. And I know lots of groups are working on it. I know Orchard's spending a lot of money and resources on it, along with others. This is really where we need to go in the year ahead, is in establishing this fluid, deep, liquid secondary market. And then there's the right side of our market structure. Securitizations are absolutely critical. We must open new doors and windows so that pensions, endowments, and foundations can own the loans we produce in a different format with a QCIP, with a rating, and with liquidity. And we've seen some excellent securitizations happen last year, some very, very solid ones in the last couple months. I can't emphasize enough how important this is. And it's only with AltFi doing what they do with the data and DVO1 helping us get efficiency and transparency and unification of our data that these securitizations happen. And this fourth part of the market structure doesn't exist. And I've said it a couple times, it's one of the things that concerns me the most about our whole industry is these financial engineers from Wall Street who continue to try to create this part of our market structure. This is where people can own our loans, have exposure to what we do with never actually buying one, being able to go short or triple short or CDO squared or hedge. And I think if we're not careful, this could be a problem for us in the future. But really, when we think of the market structure, it's these four blocks. Some of the groups are just focusing on the primary market. And so we have, again, AltFi, PRIQ, DVO1, Orchard, Manja, and Aspire, and all these groups helping us. Some are just working on the primary market. Some are actually working on the secondary market and securitization. And some are just working to the right. Like, I think, PRIQ, just to the right on the securitizations and the synthetic side. So I can't stress enough that we support the ecosystem. We support what AltFi needs from us when data requests come, because that is what's going to lead to efficiency and liquidity and the growth of new investors coming to this space. So this necessary nine that came out two years ago here at AltFi, if you go back and read it, you'll see why many platforms failed because they didn't do all or most or the majority of the necessary nine for global marketplace lending platform success. So what are the nine things that every fund must do that buys loans from us from the marketplaces, whether you're a balance sheet or a non-balance sheet lender? It's this. I took a poll, I've read every fund's returns, and determined why did some succeed and why did some not. The first one is loan valuations. Did these funds value these loans correctly? It was easy before, because the marketplace lenders kept reducing rates. But now that we're increasing rates, some funds have to go back and set a different valuation for loans that they already own. And this caused many funds to have to create a loan valuation rule and hire outside companies like Duff and Phelps and others to help them value loans. Accruals for defaults. Some funds didn't have the accruals quite right. The platform said the losses were going to be this, 
but the funds didn't have the number right. And we saw many funds have to true up the accruals on their fund to match the estimated and actual defaults of the platforms. And loan selection became obvious that some were doing it well and others weren't. Are you buying active? Are you buying passive? Are you buying 12 days later when loans are old on platforms, but you're getting discounts from platforms? This concept of loan selection really showed its pluses and minuses in the second quarter, as many funds didn't do well, and it turns out they weren't buying the best loans. Platform performance. You saw many platforms struggle, where actual losses came in way higher than estimated losses. And so looking at a fund and what platform they're buying from, even though some yields were there, supposed to be there, they didn't end up, because the platforms didn't perform. Fund fees, are they billed correctly? Are they set up correctly? Is two and 20 or one and 15 right or wrong? Leverage or no leverage? This fund fee, and then leverage. Many funds got leverage from the banks to leverage the loans, but they didn't use it. So they used up money in the fund to have the leverage, but they didn't get the balance sheet effectively set. So the use of leverage, the cost of leverage, and the correct structure became critical for many funds. And this is why many funds didn't perform, because they had all this leverage, paid the usage fees, but couldn't get the loans or didn't buy the loans. We saw lots of funds, look at number seven, who paused, who stopped buying loans in that April, May, June period. And they built up cash in the fund. And the platforms raised rates. And so they had some income coming in, defaults coming in, but they didn't enjoy any of the new higher rates that we all published. And then they had this cash drag. So this concept of starting and stopping really hurt many of the funds in their performance in the second and third quarter because they missed the higher rates and they had all this cash dragging on the performance. We saw some platforms, some balance sheet lenders, telling us, telling the industry, that they were going to sell loans at a premium at 105, five over par, but they weren't going to charge an origination fee. So some investors bought those funds. But what happened was many of those borrowers prepaid. And the investors who bought loans at a premium lost on every one. And so this concept is changing. You see many platforms in our industry now installing origination fees to the borrower and selling loans at par or closer to par. And the last one is currency hedge. Lots of funds listed in London or in London, in euros, in sterling, hedged or didn't hedge. And when Brexit happened, you saw massive changes in fund performance based on the currency hedge. So as investors and as platforms and as an ecosystem, I introduce the necessary nine for fund success. So what is the silver bullet for each of us as platforms? Is this it? Being an online marketplace where you don't have a balance sheet that owns loans. That you just get fee revenue, an origination fee and a service fee. One from the borrower, one from the servicer. And you just bring on retail and institutions and banks and others. Is that the silver bullet? Or is this the silver bullet? You're a balance sheet lender. You're not really a marketplace. You get a line of credit from the bank. You have your own proprietary capital. And then you retain loans. And then maybe securitize or maybe not. Or is this the silver bullet? Where you're some kind of combo or hybrid. Where you're some combination of the two. And we're starting to see this become a strategy, a solution, a structure that's helping platforms not go down as far in Q2 as others. Every single platform we know is looking, is moving, is shifting, is going left and right. We don't know what the right answer is, but every one of these companies is trying to figure out, is there a silver bullet? I think this picture is important today because it won't look the same the next time we all get together. There'll be other very big names on this page. Some big banks, Goldman Sachs, and others. And we have to recognize that this has been us so far. But the very big players are coming. And we should view that as validation and the reality that this game, our business, is changing. So while there is no silver bullet, I want to take a look forward together. This is what I've said at every conference, that it's not just about our numbers, our originations per month, what our growth was month to month, quarter to quarter. It's about building these 100-year sustainable profitable, successful companies. So what do we need to do to get right as an industry, as a market structure, as an ecosystem? 
We need to have risk management groups. I cannot stress this enough. It's the first thing people want to talk about when they come to Prosper. Tell me about your enterprise risk. Tell me about your compliance, your info security. How do you deal with vendors? And I'm a regulated buyer of your loans. Can you provide what my regulator, OCC, FDIC, CFPB, Treasury, Fed, and others are requiring? This has become the dominant conversation. Do you have a SOC 1? Can you show me your procedures? How do you determine who gets loans? What's the loan allocation process? This we have to get right. We do not have another chance to miss this. Platforms that don't get that will not find the new investors in our industry. And it's sustainability and profitability. How do we find a model where we actually can generate cash as marketplace lenders? What is that perfect silver bullet? And I think a lot of people are focusing on that. I think you'll see much more profitability and sustainability from marketplaces as we wash out firms that just aren't going to make it. And this concept of equilibrium. Everybody knows about the three-legged stool. The right one is the borrowers, the left one is the investors, and the middle one is us, the marketplace lenders. How do we get the left leg and the right leg to be the same, the same size, the same length, the same width, so that we have the same number of borrowers and the same number of investors, and we don't end up like we did in the second quarter, where many marketplaces had to give away loans under par or discounted servicing because there weren't enough investors. How do we get permanent capital and make those legs the same and be in equilibrium as platforms? Think about Uber when they do the surge charge thing. They're out of equilibrium, right? They have more passengers than drivers. And that's the same for us. How do we as an industry in our market structure stay in equilibrium? And the last one is this is about trust and transparency. It's the same as Boeing. If you don't trust, if they're not transparent, you're not getting on that plane. You're not buying that plane. It's that same thing we need to do. And again, going back to what AltFi and DVO1 and PeerIQ and Orchard do, is they're helping us. They're communicating our data in a third-party, independent way to these big investors, to the valuation companies, to the securitization agents, and to the press. And so we should embrace what's happening at AltFi and the ecosystem. So the CEO of Boeing said this four months after their problem. He said, we will fix this, that none of the promise of the airplane of transportation has been diminished. And I say to this group and to our industry, our promise to bring credit online, to bring credit to people who deserve it, to refinance and do large purchase isn't diminished, that our opportunity is bigger than ever, as long as we can do the four things and reestablish trust and transparency. So I encourage everybody to have a great conference and keep calm and lend on. Thank you very much.